Good morning. We're getting ready to set off again. The waterproof socks are on once more. The micro spikes will come on soon. Because the snow is not going to let us go anytime soon. But first, coffee. And the micro spikes are on already. We counted our first little field of snow, and it is absolutely solid ice at the moment, which is great, of course, for walking on. But yeah, we could not have taken a single step on this without the micro spikes on, I don't think. So, yeah. Business as usual, walking through water in micro spikes. So after an hour of following the most likely looking footsteps again, we found a signpost. It does say Lake Aloha in both directions, but I'm pretty sure that's the one we need to follow. <laughs> yep, we're playing that game again. Guess where the trail is. Find a friendly looking set of footprints and follow it. I must say, so far, touch wood, the, uh, the snow is really, really crunchy, surprisingly crunchy. I did not think it would freeze that much overnight. And it's really reasonable walking on it. But looking around us, we've made the right decision. I mean, this is pretty much how it's looked all along, which means uh, camping-wise, we made the right decision last night to pull up. We would not have found a nice spot anywhere. Or a nicer spot anyway. Whew. Enough of this. Better concentrate on the footsteps again. Nicer. Very pretty. Looks like we found Lake Aloha. Yeah, through the trees. So we now just need to get down to it and then the path pretty much follows its shore for quite a while. Um, so it should be fairly easy to not lose it down there because you're too far left, you're in the water. Yay, we found the trail. Suspiciously flat stream equals trail around here. And there's Lake Aloha. It's big. And it's entirely snowed under. We're kind of rich walking on these. <laughs> Bits around the dips. It's not flat at all. Having breakfast at a lower lake. Nice coffee. Enjoying the scenery. Just saying that, oh, you know, snow and everything. That it's manageable. We're making expected progress. We're relaxing. What happens? Bang. The mics are supposed to snap. The micro spikes have snapped. Well, one of Brian's micro while he was sitting absolutely still, doing nothing. We just can't catch a break. <laughs> this guy can't catch a break. It's fine. We've left the lower lake now. That's Heather Lake down there, that flat bit of snow. Um, and we know the path is, I mean, we can sort of see the path on the other side. We just need to get off these rocks somehow. I don't think we were meant to be on these rocks, but with Brian being a one crampon person, rocks are a little bit safer than snow for him at the moment. So we're scrambling again. What else is new? Oh, and that if ahead of us is not a lake, that's just melt water, you know. We're rock scrambling again because we enjoy it so much. We can see the path quite clearly over there. Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side of a pond that isn't normally here. So, <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's an adventure for sure. It's the top end of Heather Lake. The path is very, very, very close to the water. And I think the water level might have actually absorbed it further on. So it looks like our feet will get wet again. But how extraordinary is this? Just beautiful. I can see a path. There's one micro spike. <laughs> yeah. How awkward is it walking with one micro spike? Oh. <laughs> 
Awkward on snow, awkward on dry land. Can't win. Dry land it doesn't matter, but when you're going over something like that, yeah. you walk funny, so you go on like that, and then like that, and then like that. Just so you're secure, you yeah. don't want to slide down. Nope, not into the water that has ice banks going down into it, or snow banks. Oh, there's Susie Lake. Looks like Susie's just as frosty as Heather. This one we're going round. Who's Heather? Who's this Heather girl? <laughs> Ryan's decided to go down on his backside because, as he said, he's going to fall anyway. I'm going to try and stay upright, but that might not... Whoa, that's deep! That is deep! That's deep! He's stuck in the snow. Now oh, there he is. Well done. Fantasy dozy! Like a rock. <laughs> Stopped for lunch at Susie Lake Outlet. Having our usual luxury lunches. I've got cheese, tomato, tuna, and ranch sauce. Yes. I just got the same without the tuna. Without the tuna, obviously, but I'm having some of that ranch sauce. It's quite addictive, that stuff. Coffee's on the go. Don't grind. <laughs> Doing better today, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, my back's a lot, still hurts, but a lot better, but the snow is slowing me down because I've only got one micro spike. Yeah, one micro spike, Brian, they call him. And some of the, some, some of the walks we're doing is just a sheer drop into the lake. Yeah, they're not deep drops, but the next thing that stop you will be the lake, right. so that's not something you want to go in while it's like half snowed over and everything. So we are being extra slow, slower than our usual slow. But, but I'm enjoying it again. Good. So it looks like our days of uh, crossing streams aren't over yet. This is the outlet of Susie Lake that you actually just step through normally. But it's a bit on the small side. So we're seeing how far we can get with this log jam at the top. It is quite consistent all the way through but it's also very jumbly. Oh, that one was not a stable one. It's a weight job again. This really was not a difficult crossing, but I'm shaking like a leaf. The fear is, is sitting deep. It'll take some trauma counselling, I think, to get rid of that. Well done, Ivy. Well done, Brian. Well done, Brian. Well done for crossing a stream and not swimming down it. <laughs> Something changed. Different. Still climbing. Still trying to find our way. Just been overtaken by long legs from Quebec, Quebec, which is the first PCD hiker we've seen all day, which is quite extraordinary. As is the view up here. We're still none the wiser as to where we're actually heading because we're not. I don't think we're on the trail. We're close to it. 
long legs unfortunately followed our footsteps so that's not much help <laughs> but hopefully we're not far off we're still climbing up to Dick's Pass following other people's footsteps which luckily lead closer and closer to the rock line which means if the snow traverses get too bad we can evacuate to the rocks it's just I mean, it's not this is not a scary or a terrible path so far it's just when you've got one micro spike working and the snow has reached this level of slushiness we slip a lot and while it's not super steep it's steep it's not really a place you want to fall finally made it up Dick's Pass every perceivable joke about that name has been made so we're just sticking to the facts it is snow covered obviously it's taken us 11 hours to get up here and we need to find somewhere to camp and it does not look good Supposedly it comes out in two miles, but if it's snowy till then, uh, neither Brian nor I have that in us anymore. We have finally regained the pass. It's taken us two hours to get down from Dick's Pass to this level. Whatever this level is. This has probably been the worst descent of the PCT so far. It's absolutely invisible, the pass. People have bushwhacked here, there and everywhere, cutting switchbacks. They've gone down incredibly steep ways. And we followed them for a bit until we just couldn't do it no more. The roads are heading straight for the lake, which is down there. Which, you know, if you go and fall, <laughs> could have severe consequences. So, the sun is not far from setting, unfortunately, and we still haven't found anywhere flat to camp, but hopefully, now that we're on the trail-ish, we might get somewhere. So, today's less than successful day, again. So, I'll we'll start up somewhere here, just about Tamarat Lake and hit the snow as predicted quite early on which wasn't bad it was good going on the snow um, we made reasonable progress didn't know where the trail was half the time the usual story but as you can see the trail follows a fairly you know straightforward line so as long as we were pointing in the right direction we knew we would, we would be okay and um we reached the shores of, well, Lake Aloha. But there were a couple of tricky bits uh, around boulders where we didn't know where to go and just by sheer chance around those areas there was visible trail and dry trail. So that worked out fine. This is where, however, where Brian's uh, micro spikes snapped. Which was not that brilliant because, you know, we still had all this to do, and it was snowy. It was starting to get on and off snowy here. I mean, we could sort of, we came around, I think we missed the pass here somewhere, and we could see Heather Lake, um, the, the, the trail going around Heather Lake on the opposite side, so we had to scramble a little bit down. And then around Heather Lake it was on and off snow. Um, but it was, yeah, it was all you know, perfectly doable. We were having a good time. We reached Susie Lake, where the snow became even less. We had lunch somewhere here, overlooking the lake, and um, then had this slightly scary, well for me, slightly scary water crossing. I mean, it's just honestly, before Tyndall Creek I would have walked through there without a second sword, but the fear runs deep now. Um, and then we started the climb up, which again was for large parts snow free. I mean, we thought we were in for a good day, and then everything just turned to crap, as it does on the approach to Dick Pass, because 
the snow was soft by now, obviously. And, um, and some of those traverses we had to do were very, very steep. Not steep for us, but you know, you know what I mean. It's like you're walking across a line like that. And when one of you has only one micro spike, that is scary. <laughs> because it was starting to get quite slippy. So we, we tended, we, we kind of walked around most of the snow fields where possible or climbed above them. Because it would just, yeah, again, normally, yeah, it wouldn't have been that much of a problem, but with the, the problem with our equipment, it just was a bit risky. And, um, yeah, and by the time you reach the actual switchbacks, two ticks past these ones here, uh, the trail was almost snow free again. Which boded well until we reached Dick's Pass, which was completely snow covered and entirely snow covered the entire way down. And this, I mean, you kind of sort of go pretty gently for a while, but here where those switchbacks start, um, it's quite a steep descent to the lake. The trail would not take a steep descent, but we were following other people's footsteps who had decided somehow round about here that the way to go would be this. I mean, they were literally heading straight down the hill towards the lake and we could not see where we were supposed to go. So we followed the footsteps for a while until we realized what they were doing because you just think, oh, surely other people are sort of trying to find the trail as well. And it was utterly, utterly terrifying. I mean, it, it's so, so steep and it was so slushy by that point that even having micro spikes didn't make much difference. And following these guys' footsteps, we ended up in, in positions where we thought, this is too steep in all directions. We can't turn left, we can't turn right, we can't go straight ahead. So in the end, we just went, sort this and, and started to cut across. And, and as Brian discovered, this is the way the path should go anyway. So we kind of actually managed to hit the path once or twice. And that would have been, you know, judging by where we were, a really simple and gentle descent. So, yeah, following other, footstep, other people's footsteps in snow is 99% of the time it works. When it doesn't work, it's a real bad idea. So we're somehow, I think we're, we're about here now, where we've just, we were aiming for uh, this trail junction because Guthook says there is some campsites nearby but we found a piece of flat ground with no snow on it and just went sod this. It was 8 o'clock by then. <laughs>